Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Story number 1. Neutron Stars Are Forever. Written by Lane Mella. Alonco had been preparing for this moment for longer than he cared to think about. A deep cover agent for the industrial Sahal. He had trained for years to get where he was. Painful surgeries and physical therapy, makeup and piles of research combed through every tiny detail. He knew to stifle the instinctive urge to arch his lower limbs at the need of a tour. It was so inefficient to limit himself only to his upper digits. Although having five fingers instead of two was extremely nice, he had to admit. Learning to use the things properly had been nightmare-inducing. He still had horror dreams about trying to learn to use the chopsticks in particular. Fortunately, many humans could not master the skill either, so he had not flunked out when he had failed that part of the exam. It wasn't that surprising, actually. Anatomy changes like this were an expensive procedure and he had already been partially trained on how to use five fingers with a brain that was wired for two by the time that they had reached that point. At least humans seemed to have a large range of behaviors and cultures, so Alanka need only focus on perfecting one. He was one of the few fake human moles who chose to go with something other than American though. It was probably the easiest to emulate being very open to strangeness because of mixing a part of cultures, as well as a penchant for being allowed and generally oblivious to the societal norms of other countries. He still picked an English-speaking country, so that he could practice and strange syllables with his peers, and he watched archives worth of classic movies to perfect his Bristol accent. That combined with the meek demeanor and the penchant for being wallflower for a while and he'd be able to go where he liked. For the glory of Sahal, he would do as generations of spies had done before him when a new species hit the galactic stage. He would collect data and protect the collective. This wasn't even the most extreme change that he had seen in the textbooks. Although forward facing eyes had been odd. Blinking at the correct rate had also taken copious amounts of practice, as well as suppressing his inner eyelid. At this point, he might as well buy stock in the company that made seeding solution. He went through it at an alarming speed. He had a small capsule for context to explain the seeding to the humans as well. Although, the thought of actually inserting little bits of glass into his eyes made him shiver. Even... After all the mods he'd been through, such a primitive method was absolutely petrifying to contemplate. Humans were so unsanitary and needlessly archaic. He tugged at the too tight collar at the strange rags that the humans were fond of. He wasn't certain exactly what the function that Ty posed, just that it was a custom, but tight. Well, this was day one of his assignment. He supposed eventually it would be just more of an uncomfortable thing on top of another million. He no longer felt like a Sahol, but neither did he feel quite human, stuck in a strange limbo he didn't quite know how to feel about. He did, however, feel prepared. He knew he was ready. All of his training had led him to these few glorious moments. Yet, anxiety still surged as well as he could carefully started mentally reciting the correct instructions for making tea for the millionth time. Half practice, half distraction. Boil the water. One tea bag per person and then one for the pot. Warm the pot and the cups with the hot water rinse. Add near boiling water and don't forget your tea cozy. Steep for five minutes. 
Paul then add the mer. Crush. Whoosh. He slammed into a human hat. Papers he was grasping flew everywhere. He slid a bit across the floor and winced. He was going to feel that later. The human rocked back on its heels, then steadied itself. And Agor immediately stood to his feet with a brush at it off, offering his usual mild manner apology. Internally, he was cursing himself. Everything straining his muscles as he kept it from his face. He was awkwardly scooping up the white papers that the humans used. So wasteful. Both species had gone fully digital over a century ago. But this was a military installation, and strictly speaking, he wasn't really supposed to be here even as a human self. If he was caught, he'd be in deep crap from both of his new human boss and his old Sahal one as well. What did the human spies say? Breck. Yes, Breck was a good term for how Alan Cor was feeling right now. The copious amounts of paper had worked as a distraction and partially as a shield, but his lack of attention had turned it into the greatest nightmare. This was a soldier, a human, staring at him probably with suspicion. Although he could not see this thing's face, he was startled when a moment later he heard a gruff, no problem, and then help. The human was helping scoop up wayward bits of printed tree pulp. Soon the large human, dressed in military fatigues that Alancor knew clothed those who brought death. Being friendly, he had been under the impression that all the military tribes were gruff and unforgivable. Day one, and already he felt like he knew nothing once again about these strange, bipedal creatures. Then the creature overextended its jaw with a small pop right in front of Alancor's face. And just as suddenly, the soldier was yelling, snatching him by his upper limbs and crushing grip. Double frick. What had given him away? Wait, the dude I caught was an avian. I just thought he was a sociopath, which would have automatically failed him for any sort of job test here. I remember the screening for that crap. It was intense, Lieutenant Rod said as his arms waved about frantically, his eyes wide behind his thin glasses. That's usually what it means when someone doesn't yawn back. The whole little green men thing is new, plus, um, he looked human. Didn't he look human? The tall, bespeckled man paced back and forth uneasily at the very thought. End of story. Story number two. Vulcan, written by D. Raiden. The lift hummed softly as it rose towards the bridge of the ship, and there was little that I could do but wait. You really would think that an interstellar civilization a thousand years more advanced than us would have something more advanced than lifts. But as it turned out, no. The galaxy ran on a, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Which meant that while their tech was fancy, it was only a thousand years more advanced, barring FTL drives than ours. When our first FTL-capable ship had first contact a couple of the systems over from Sol. We didn't expect humanity to be anything special. We both were, and we weren't. The lift stopped, and I walked into the bridge, the space lighting up from the LED strips of my suit. There was one annoying thing about alien ships. They were pitch dark. As it turned out, that was something unique about humans. We had eyes. Apparently, that was rare. Very rare. Apparently, Earth was the only place where life evolved eyes. We couldn't believe it at first, because what the hell? It has evolved three times independently on Earth for crying out loud. But no. The bridge was filled with clicking and rasping sounds, and the captain turned to me before he approached. I did my best not to cringe as the lightly rat-like captain's lobster-like feelers brushed across my shoulder and the sides of my face as he clicked at me. My translator in my ear, translating for me, Welcome aboard, Specialist Jackson. I am Captain k k k k k k do, do you find your living space? I could see the color shifting across his short fur. There was something most species had. No eyes, no optical defenses. You could literally see at least hints of their feelings. Captain K was nervous. 
I did, thank you, Captain. I answered and smiled at him. Not that he could tell easily, as I reached up and touched his left feeder with the back of one hand. I am ready to get to work. Of course, your shift at the bridge sign station is about to start. Are you certain you're capable of working a double shift without rest? Yes, sir, I answered. It was only eight hours, after all. And other things humans had over most aliens. We were persistence hunters. We were built to follow antelope across the scorching savanna for three days straight. While omnivores or even predators weren't rare, aggressive species did have a better chance to get to the top of the food chain and civilization after all. We were the first ones with that specific hunting trick. Heading over to the science station, I touched the antenna of the giant bug sitting there and took her place so that she could get some rest. Reconfiguring the chair to something a bit closer to an ergonomic for humans, I sat down and slid a pair of glasses down before my eyes as I plugged into the console. While I could use their tactile and audio-based interface, even getting text-based interface was rather nice. So in short, humans could keep working a lot longer than most aliens, had a sense that they simply didn't, and on top of it all, we could read them easily enough to basically be empathic. We thought the galaxy would be full of amazing aliens, strange phenomenons, and alien technology. It turned out that we were completely right. Other than teleporters, we weren't that far from that old Star Trek series. But what we really, really didn't expect was for us to be the Vulcans of the universe. Science officer reporting in, Captain, I said as I longed onto the system. All senses read clear. We are safe for warp. Captain K sat down in his chair, his feet is moving through the air, testing the currents. Acknowledged, science officer. Helm, engage. And so we were off to explore the universe and all its wonders. It was just too bad that nobody but humans could see it. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.